Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Ghost, and today I'll be continuing my coverage of the U.S. carriers. And, uh, yeah, yesterday we did a review of the Langley. Today we're carrying on the, um, the effort here, and we're taking a look at the Tier 5 American Tech Tree aircraft carrier, USS Ranger. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it, shall we? So, for the upgrades and loadout, I am running Flight Control Mod 1. And I'm running Air Groups Mod 2, okay? Very important. Uh, AA, no point. Secondary, no point. You want to be getting as much out of your planes as possible, okay? Uh, again, secondary. You should never have to be using your secondaries, okay? Um, now, I am also fully upgraded as well, so there you go. For the loadout, we have some squadrons here, okay? So just like the Langley, um, th this uh, you have the same amount of attacks and you have the same amount of sort of deal. Two attacks per squadron are, you know, per uh, you, you can drop two torpedoes and two bombs, okay, per attack, and you can get three attacks off in total, okay? So you have six planes in a squadron. Two of those planes attack at a time. So there you go. Um, now, for the HE dive bombers, uh, the hit points is 3,100, the maximum speed currently on my build. This could all vary, of course, depending on your build, but currently this is how it stands. Uh, 146 knots. Attack unit size, so that's how many planes you're going in to attack with. Two, okay, just two. And your attack per squadron, so how many planes are in that in a full squadron is six, okay? So you can take off with six planes, and you can attack with two planes at a time, essentially. Uh, detectability range by um, uh, for these bombers here is nine kilometers, and a maximum bomb damage of 15,200. That's with a Citadel hit. So these are slightly bigger bombs than the Langley's. I say slightly. They're significantly bigger. I don't know the exact size of the bombs. It might tell us in the specs tab. But, um, yeah, they're they're pretty good. So, um, anyway, we also do have some engine coolings, of course, on both, uh, on both squadrons. But what you start to get now at Tier 5 is patrol fighters. So when you're flying over a certain area of the map, you can click right on the D-pad to deploy fighters. And fighters can shoot down other planes, and they can, of course, spot things as well. So it's a nice little thing to have. If you intercept an enemy squadron, you can deploy patrol fighters, and they will lock on to those aircraft and potentially shoot some of them down. So very nice to have indeed. Now, the Ranger also does come with some torpedo bombers. Uh, 2,600 hit points on my build currently. Uh, the maximum speed for these torpedo bombers is 145 knots. Again, attack unit size 2 and attack uh, per squadron 6. So you can get 3 attacks off and you have 6 planes in total per squadron. Okay. Uh, detectability range currently is 10 kilometers. Of course, that these stats can vary depending on your build. Like, for example... If you were to take off out of sight and put on, if you want to go for a torpedo focus build, and you can do that, and you can put this on, and then my stats would vary. My dive bombers would be less stealthy, but they would, you know, but then my torpedo bombers would be, you know, benefiting. So you can, it depends. If you like dive bombing more, go with this. If you like torpedo bombing more, go with this. The Americans, though, you got to keep in mind, at least with the tech tree carriers, I'm not talking about Saipan or Independence, I'm talking about the tech tree carriers. The American dive bombers, their best thing, or, you know, the best uh, resource they have is their dive bombers. Their bombs do really consistent amounts of damage, so you want to be trying to, you know, get most out of your dive bombers, in my experience. But, you know, if, it, if the American carriers are all you got, and you really like torpedo bombing, I mean, you could still put on hidden threat to make your torpedo bombers more stealthily, right? More stealthy and more tanky, basically. Um, but anyways, that's the torpedo bombers. Um... I mean, also, you can take a look at them on the deck. We haven't done that yet, but as you guys can see, we're not using uh, we're not using biplanes anymore, right? Like on the USS Langley. No, this is uh, we are actually using full fledged, um, uh, you know, propeller planes, right? So again, I don't know much about planes, so you got to bear with me. I don't know the, the exact like statistics of planes, but I know um, that these are you know your regular American uh, bombers, at least you know pre-World War II era. Obviously, when you get to Lexington, for example, then you have a bunch of World War II um, planes on your Lexington, right? As you guys can see here, you got a bunch of Dauntlesses, and you got some uh, SVB-2s, I think, or whatever you want to call them. So, yeah. But for now, I think these are like the 1930s, 1920s uh, planes that the Americans had on their carriers. 
And um, keep in mind, too, as well, that the Ranger was actually our very first aircraft carrier that we designed from the keel up. Uh, USS Ranger, CV-4. Um, it was the first, like, you know, actual U.S.-designed carrier. We actually fully made this thing into a carrier from start to finish. Unlike the Langley, for example, USS Langley was not started as a carrier. Remember, the Langley was a collier ship, and then she was converted to an aircraft carrier later on. However, Langley was built from the keel all the way up to the to what you see now uh, into a full-fledged fleet aircraft carrier. So she actually did serve in real life, and she's a, she was a real ship. Pretty much all of the American carriers currently in the game, including Midway, all did exist, and they all did partake in battles and stuff like that, okay? So... Now, uh, moving on to the final bits of the loadout here, um, we have damage control parties. Um, these only go up when your car your aircraft carrier, you know, gets hit, flooded, or whatever, set on fire. It'll pop up, and then it'll last for 60 seconds, and then once that minute goes by, um, then it's on an 87 second cooldown. So, yeah. Either way, though, you do not want to be getting hit at all in your ranger, in any, car in any carrier. You want to try to be positioning your carrier where you don't get attacked, but where you can still, you know, send the planes off and, and uh, potentially get them in there strategically and stuff like that. So now with the patrol fighters here, or these aren't your patrol fighters, so these are your actual fighters that take off from your aircraft carrier. Um, so let's say, for example, you get spotted, right? Your aircraft carrier itself gets spotted. Um, then your aircraft carrier will actually deploy these fighters. As long as you don't have a squadron taking off or landing, um, the carrier will send up fighters up into the air, and they will stay in the air for 600 seconds, unless they get shot down, of course. Um, the reload time is also really quick as well. So let's say, for example, um, these fighters all get shot down, uh, all five of them. Then in about 38 seconds, um, they'll send some more up to uh, hopefully defend your aircraft carrier from incoming um, planes and whatnot. So pretty nice to have indeed. Okay, helps you a little bit when it comes to you getting carrier sniped, which is a thing. People do do it. It is annoying. Even sometimes when I'm mad at the world and I hate the game, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to ruin everybody's game, including the carrier, and I'm just going to go right at the carrier and be a dick. <laughs> so, yeah, these do help you out in, in hopefully, you know, thwarting enemy carrier attacks, right? And, of course, the Americans, once you start getting to the Ranger, the AA is phenomenal on these aircraft carriers. We'll cover that in the Specs tab, of course, here coming up very shortly. Uh, we're running the Fleet Pioneer flag, and we're running the Type 9 camouflage that the ship comes with. Actually, sorry, no, it didn't come with it. This is just a Type 1. It's a camo that I had to convert and, uh, you know, upgrade, so it didn't actually come with a camo. Um, this is a tech tree ship. Um, but anyway, yeah, it looks good, man. It's it's like 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 I said, it's the first major U.S. carrier design. This is our pretty much our first ground up, you know, carrier design, and it looks good, man. It's a good looking carrier. I really like the look of it. Okay. Um, anyway, moving on to the specs now. We've got forty four thousand nine hundred hit points, so a little bit more than the Ranger, obviously. Or sorry, the Ranger than the Langley. Uh, we also do have our uh, our Vought. Our Vought uh, SB2U Vindicator dive bombers, and we have some Douglas TBD Devastator uh, torpedo bombers. Um, these uh, dive bombers have a fire setting chance on each one of those bombs of 52%. So if you can manage to land both of your bombs, that's a 104% fire chance. Okay, you're basically almost guaranteed a fire if you can land your bombs, unless you have horrible RNG, right? So. Of course, also, your aircraft restoration time is 48 seconds. For the torpedo bombers now, uh, the torpedo range is 3.5 kilometers. Uh, the torpedo speed is 49 knots, a little bit more than the uh, Langley's torpedoes. And, of course, your aircraft restoration time is a little longer, 62 seconds. For the artillery, you do get a little bit of artillery, but let's be real. If you're having to, de uh, to depend on your secondaries in an aircraft carrier, you're either playing it wrong or you're just in a really fucked up situation. Okay, but you do have some American 127 millimeter Mark 19 Mod 6 5 inch dual purpose guns, I believe, uh, with a firing range of four and a half kilometers with a four and a half second reload, 1800 shell uh, HE shell maximum damage with a nine percent chance of setting fires. Now, moving on to the AA defense, you do have an absolute crap fuck ton of 20 millimeter Orlikin Mark 4s. You got 47 single barreled 20 millimeter Orlikins, you got an absolute Fuckload of them. Pardon my language, but seriously, you just, you're, you're littered with um, with uh, 20 millimeters everywhere. Bunch of machine guns. Okay, uh, the average damage per second for all of these is about 186, which is pretty good. 
with a two and a half or a 2.3 kilometer firing range. So not the greatest firing range. These are only going to open up with the planes are basically right on top of you. Now you do have some 40 millimeter Bofors. They are the Mark IIs. You have uh, five sets of four of them. So um, you also have an 87 average damage per second on those Bofors with a 3.9 kilometer firing range on those 40 millimeter Bofors. And of course, your secondaries, aka your 127 millimeter guns that we were talking about in the artillery tab, aka your secondaries, they also do act as AA as well. They are dual purpose, meaning that they can shoot at planes and they can shoot at naval targets, ships, right? Uh, 4.7 kilometer firing range with a 64 average damage per second. Moving on to the maneuverability, th uh, 29 and a half knot maximum speed, a very, very significant um, increase from, for example, uh, the Langley. And now here is something I didn't realize, but it's absolutely atrocious. The turning circle radius is 1,010 meters. Yeah, <laughs> you get better speed, you're a lot quicker, but man, oh man, you turn like a fucking train, okay? Which makes sense. You're an aircraft carrier, you're, you're, you're carrying absolute crap loads of munitions and, and airplanes, it makes sense. And your rudder shift is 11.4 second, uh, seconds, so there you go. Now finally in the specs tab, the concealment. Uh, detectability range by sea is 11.6 kilometers. <laughs> Detectability range by air is 8.3, currently on my build, of course. And guaranteed detectability, uh, detectability range is 2 kilometers. Moving on to the armor. You get a very slight increase in armor, but nothing special. Uh, you get 19 millimeters of bow, stern armor, and everywhere else you are plastered in... Um, it looks like, what is it? Uh, night, is it? I can't tell. 16, so 16 millimeters of armor. So you're just plastered in blue. Um, not a whole lot of armor, and your citadel is very exposed. Odds are, if you get hit by any sort of high explosive rounds, they're still going to be able to citadel you if they land right back there. I've citadeled rangers, I've citadeled plenty of aircraft carriers with high explosive. It can be done. It's pretty common, because you got to remember, I mean, look how lightly armored these carriers are. They're super lightly armored. It's not hard to absolutely obliterate them and get penetrations and whatnot. So you got to be really careful. And now finally for the overview, um, tough aircraft, powerful AA defenses, both pretty decently true, and slow aircraft, yeah, they are pretty slow. Um, but they're tanky and, you know, they do things, I guess. Ranger. The first U.S. aircraft carrier of special construction. The ship carried a large air group. So there you go. Like I said, for the first U.S. aircraft carrier of special construction, meaning she was actually really the first ground-up aircraft carrier that we actually fully designed and put out to sea. The carrier's speed was quite high for her type. Yeah, 30 knots, pretty good. Uh, her drawbacks included a lack of torpedo protection and impractical arrangement of aircraft elevators, which slowed down the handling of air groups. Yeah, pretty true. Back here, it's pretty weird. It's a pretty weird spot to have your, your uh, aircraft... Uh, being leveled up there, but um, anyway, uh, she entered service in 1934, so just before World War II broke out, and there was only one in the series, just the Ranger herself, so um, yeah, anyway, let's take a look at the commander finally, and then we'll move on to the gameplay portion. Jersey Swirsky and Dennis Boyd as inspirations, we're running No Fly Zone, Emergency Power, Out of Sight, Look at Me Now, and Fully Packed. He's a Legendary 3, Rank 15 Captain, and nonetheless, I will bring you all over to the gameplay portion of today's video in the Ranger. I hope you all do enjoy it. Alrighty, so, here we are in the gameplay portion. I am, again, like yesterday, I'm doing a live comm sort of deal. I'm just playing, we're gonna see what happens, I'm gonna do the best I can. Uh, Crash Zone, is it's a domination mode, so... Uh, first things first, we're going to take off with a squadron of HE dive bombers. I'm built into the HE dive bombers. I want to try to get as much use out of them as possible. Now we got a Wesser on the enemy team. Wesser has AP dive bombers. We got to watch out for those and, and whatnot. Um, but hopefully he doesn't attack me at all. Uh, there's a New Mexico, Renown, New York. Not a lot of scary things on the enemy team. So I think we'll be okay. So... I think what I'm going to do is immediately move my aircraft carrier off to the right, or off to the left side over here, as you guys can see at the top of the map here. Um, I'm going to have my carrier have a waypoint over here by this island, and I'm going to go out and spot things like we always do. Um, I always encourage people to always, num like, number one, is just spot. 
always spot when you first start your game as a carrier. You should go from one end of the map and fly to the other and try to spot as much as you can and get an idea of what the enemy is doing, where they're at, and, and especially where their destroyer's at. We're in a game with two destroyers. Yesterday when we were playing the Langley, we didn't have a single destroyer in the lobby. So this game, I need to be, you know, trying to keep those destroyers spotted, especially that Fabuki. The Visby, not as worried about the Visby, but he still can be a threat. But that Fabuki is a major threat. He can dish out torpedoes, all the things, and they're very hurtful torpedoes. Because, you know, Japanese torpedoes are absolutely and utterly disgusting. So we got to really keep an eye out for that guy. So we already got a Renown spotted in a New York. And right off the bat, we got the Fabuki spotted. Here he is. So we're going to drop on him right now. He's smoking up and he's turning. I'm going to drop the bombs there. Hope for the best. Oh, they miss. Unfortunate. Oh, both destroyers are right here. We got the Visby and the Fabuki in one spot. We're going to keep on flying over, over these guys and keeping them on their toes, trying to keep them spotted for our team. So they can hopefully get some shots in. And if I can even hit some bombs, that's just a bonus. And just like that, we hit a bomb. As you guys just saw there, that one bomb hit, we did 5,000 damage to that Fabuki. That's about half his health gone. That is super significant. Hitting that one bomb is insanely crucial. Now, I'm going to move my carrier a little bit more. I don't like where it's at. I want to get it around this island, and then I'm going to stop. just want to make sure the autopilot's not going to kill me, you know what I mean? So you got to be paying attention to that, too. Paying attention to what your carrier itself is doing and where the enemy is positioning. Now, this Visby is getting absolutely obliterated. He's getting focused down by our Mayhan and our Kamikaze. And, yeah, they have absolutely no problem in dealing with that guy whatsoever. And down he goes. And it's actually the friendly Omaha that gets the kill. He yoinks it. Gotta love it. And now, that, that Fabuki is still spotted out there. It looks like he's actually a mobile player. I just realized. ID124. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, usually mobile players are the ones with the ID names, so yeah, we're going to go in there, drop on him, and make him hopefully regret life decisions of just picking the Fabuki. We got to keep these Japanese destroyers on the spot. They're absolutely disgusting. They need to be dealt with like vermin. So even if I can't hit him with the bombs, I'm still keeping him spotted. I'm making him run away, right? That's the whole idea. Keeping the destroyers on the spot, giving them no quarrel, making their life an absolute living hell. That's what your job is as a carrier. Even if you can't do any damage, just keeping them spotted, spotting their torpedoes, it completely ruins their game. It prevents them from doing anything. And just like that, we are able to uh, keep the destroyer away from my teammates. We're able to spot his torpedoes, and we can get the caps because of it. And our destroyers are still fine. They're sticking together. It looks like they're in a division together. So they're going to be able to hopefully accomplish some things for the rest of this game. Now, since we lost quite a few uh, uh, HE dive bombers, um, we're going to send out some uh, torpedo bombers instead. We still have a bunch of them, so we're going to start utilizing these guys. Now, it looks like we've got a lone New York. So I'm going to come in here and do a little bit of a drop on him. See what I can do. Unless he gets absolutely obliterated by my battleships, because he's sailing pretty broadside if you pay attention to the map. So we gotta, you know, keep an eye on that. But, still though, I'm gonna come in here and drop on him anyway. He's not going that quick. He is in New York. He's a dreadnought, so he's not gonna be going super quick. Looks like the enemy Fabuki is still just sailing away. We made him run away. And that's exactly what you want to be doing, is making those destroyers regret picking a destroyer. Make them just suffer. We know what destroyers are capable of if they're left, you know, alone to do whatever they want. We must give them no quarrel. Uh, we're going to send out another squadron of HE dive bombers now. We did hit another torpedo on that New York. The, the New York is not having fun. And I'm going to begin to start moving my carrier up. Hopefully by the time I move my carrier up, that New York will be dead. So we're going to start moving our CV. And uh, yeah, getting into a better position here. Because um, as you guys can see, the enemy team on this side of the map is retreating. They're all running away. Our team is doing a pretty good job of putting pressure on them and, and, and uh, making them just, yeah, not have fun whatsoever. Now, it looks like there's some Fabuki Torps coming in. And I'm going to immediately go over there and uh, start dive bombing that Fabuki again. Now, Renown does have some decent AA, so we, you know, we do got to be, you know, a little bit of, uh, weary some of that. But, um... We should still, though, be able to get some strikes on this Fabuki, if not outright kill him. All I need is a couple more bomb hits, and that man is dead. Um, so I'm going to try to come in here. Now, there's the enemy carrier. 
There we go. But I'm gonna try to come in here and die bomb him once again. He's going really fast, unfortunately, but it doesn't matter. My planes are faster than you, buddy. And unfortunately, the bombs miss. As you guys can see, bombs in this game, they are super trolly. But when they actually do hit, as you guys saw earlier, they can do really high amounts of damage. So our planes are getting shot down one by one. And that bomb goes to the very top of the reticle there, unfortunately. My bomb RNG right now is not good whatsoever. So unfortunately, we miss those bombs on that Fabuki. But again, look where he's at on the map. He has no way of torping our battleships. He's so far back, he's basically irrelevant. He's irrelevant. We've made him run away and completely, basically, you know, like I said, be irrelevant. He, he can't really accomplish anything now because he's so far back. And the only thing he can accomplish is maybe torpedoing our kamikaze. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I, I have confidence in my kamikaze. If you have a kamikaze, odds are you are good, because that's a rare ship. Usually it's the veterans that have that ship uh, in their port, so... Nonetheless, though, once again, we're sending a full squadron of, uh, this time, torpedo bombers. We're just cycling back and forth. We're sending a squadron of bombers, then we come out and send a squadron of torpedo bombers. We just keep, you know, cycling them out. You know, squadron by squadron. So, anyway. Now, this Fabuki, I don't know where he's at. And that, that, uh, that, uh, Renown's AA is just, yeah, as you guys can see, he has so much anti-aircraft that it is not fun. I don't know where that Fabuki went, so what we're going to do here is begin to drop on this Renown. And we're going to see if we can't get any torpedo hits. As you guys can see, that Renown is just ripping my planes apart. And I think I gave him the perfect gap to dodge through, unfortunately. So yeah, now I need to start being, though, a little bit more conservative with my planes. Um, you gotta remember, since we're at tier 5 now, as you guys can see, I mean, they're, the, the enemy and, you know, all ships at tier 5 start getting AA. Um, so you really gotta start keeping an eye on the bottom right of your screen. As you guys can see, we can only send up four, you know, bombers of each type into the air. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just kind of wait around a little bit. I'm not gonna send my planes up yet. I'm gonna wait for some of them to come back. And uh, then we will um, begin to send some more uh, bombers up in the air. Now, I see a lone Orion out there. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to send out a squadron of torpedo bombers. And we're going to go bomb that Orion um, with some of these torpedo bombers. Now, it looks like the enemy Fabuki is spotted. And our Kamikaze and our Mayhan, is, uh, they're rushing him down. They should be able to take him out. As you guys can see, I mean, they're just landing hits after hits after hits. They should hopefully be able to take him out. If they take him out, that should be game right there. Whoever kills the DDs first usually is going to be the victor at the end of the game. So, unfortunately, though, it looks like they're struggling to get hits. Oh, there's one. He's almost dead, and down he goes. Okay, so they got the they got the Fabuki. And still, though, despite us killing their destroyers, uh, this is a pretty close game, as you guys can see. Um, we're still pretty much tied on ships. The only area where we have the lead is in caps. And the enemy team is right now trying to get towards our caps. So we want to try to, you know, hopefully defend them properly. Now, HE die bomber going in, and we get one penetration with one of the bombs on the battleship. Unfortunately, though, I don't miss, I don't hit all, you know, all of them. You know, it is what it is. So we're going to once again swing back around and see if we can't get another hit or two with these HE die bombers. Come on, game. It's a battleship. I should be able to absolutely wreck them. And for some reason, the game is, like, not giving me any fires. I don't get that, but uh, anyway, whatever. Um, let's send our carrier out to the south here, I guess, maybe? Actually, I think I'm just going to keep it here. We'll just go one-fourth speed for now and just chill. Um, carrier positioning is very important because all it takes is one salvo from a battleship, and you could potentially get sent to the Shadow Realm. I have dev-struck quite a few carriers, even angled. Like, you know, we saw in the armor viewer how little armor the Ranger has. All it takes is a well-placed shot from, like, one of these battleships out here, a New Mexico Salvo, or even especially a renowned Salvo, and they could easily overmatch me and citadel the crap out of me. So we just want to, you know, really be paying attention to our carrier's positioning. Now, it looks like our team is trying to throw this game. Like, this Queen Elizabeth is charging everything. I, I don't know why that he thinks that's a good idea. So we're going to come in, though, and try to once again 
get some uh, damage here in on these guys that are in our cap, man. We need to defend our cap as much as possible. So there we go. We got our torpedoes away. And it looks like we're going to hit both of them. One on the mid, one of midships, one in the, uh, in the rear there. We're going to swing these guys back around. We're going to see if we can't get a couple hits maybe on this Orion to finish them out. Finish them off, rather. Those look good, and those should both hit. Nope, just one. Just one, and it was a flood. Okay. So... Yeah, that New Mexico and that Orion, they both have a pretty decent AA bubble, so I was kind of losing quite a few planes there, as you guys saw. But Orion is currently still flooding, so he should hopefully flood out. It's ticking, it's ticking, it's ticking. He's on like a 1,000 HP. Oh, he damage cons it. Okay. So what we're going to do is send our squadrons back out here again, and we need to finish this Orion right now. Our team right now is trying to throw this cave. Like, it's a 4v5 now. Um, this could turn into a loss. If the team keeps dying, it's going to be GG's. Like, our team needs to cut it out. They need to cut it out and pull their shit together. And, of course, I miss both bombs. I, I, just, I just love that. Don't worry, though. My New York is here to help me uh, finish them off. Jesus, man. The RNG right now with the dive bombers is not good. Not good. I'm going to try to get a strike here on this New Mexico. Hey, I got a fire. There we go. That's something. And uh, as you guys can see, um, the team is just throwing this game. Like, this is this is a completely winnable game, and they're throwing ship by ship. Um, not ideal. Okay? Not ideal at all. Our kamikaze just died, and that was our last destroyer. I, I just... Yeah. Yikes. Yikes. Uh -huh. But anyways, we're deep playing now, and unfortunately, I just... I don't think I'm going to send anything up at the moment. I'm going to wait a little bit just so I can get some of these dive bombers back. You look at the mini-map, they are flying back. And I'll take off with another uh, few dive bombers to hopefully get some decent bits of damage. Actually, let's take off the three torpedo bombers we got. Um, I like to have at least three to take off with, so at least one of them goes down and I can still get the other two off. So, we're going to come out here again, try to freaking bomb the crap out of this... Uh, torpedo bomb the crap out of this uh, New Mexico... So we're lining up the torpedoes. New Mexico's not really trying to dodge these whatsoever, so this should be two hits. He's stopping as well. So drop him right there. Should be perfect. You know, just because we'll even drop on this uh, Konigsberg. Actually, no, our, he's got the fighters up. Our, uh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> and, well, down it goes the New Mexico anyway. We got the New Mexico. We're getting shot at by the battleship. And as you guys just saw, one round from the Renown just citadeled me. Or it might not have been a citadel. It was definitely a penetration, if anything. That hurt. And I, I, I need to back up my plane or my carrier. But right now I don't have the time. I need to just come out here and keep attacking. I need to keep the pressure on the enemy. Because if I don't, they're gonna kill everything on my team. So this is a pretty close game. I'm trying to just keep pressure on these guys. We have the points lead still, so if we can just not lose everything, that would be great. Not a very good drop on my end, but I didn't have a very good angle. I'm going to swing back around, though, because I have a better angle here. And, of course, his fighters are just absolutely wrecking my fucking planes. I like how when I play, you know, ships, my fighters do nothing. But everybody else's fighters seems to be on crack cocaine. Oh, I, got, I just love that. But anyways, despite everything, despite this being a super close game, it looks like we're still going to end up pulling this one off. This this could have went really bad. Um, I was a little worried. I was a little bit worried. But, um, yeah. I think we're going to be able to win. We still have the cap, and we still have the points. So, as long as I don't die, and as long as everybody else don't die, this should be GG's. Again, look at that. Renown already takes half of my health with, what, three guns? Yeah, that's insane. But, nonetheless... That's end of the game right there. And there we go. So not a very good game in the in the Ranger, but we still did our job. We kept the DDs spotted. We made the enemies retreat. That was a really close game, all things considering. That could have easily turned into a, a another game of throws. Um, but anyway, still, even though we didn't do a lot in terms of damage and stuff, we still kept the enemy team spotted and we kept them on the, you know, on their spot. 
and we placed third because of it. So I'll take that. It's not a horrible game, but it's not a great game either, right? But um, anyway, nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all did enjoy today's video. If you guys did, be sure to go down there, hit the like button, and hit the subscribe button. I do appreciate you all. Seriously, you guys have been amazing lately. Uh, the support's been awesome. So anyways, have a great one, everybody. I will catch you all later. Peace out.